Hi everyone. Yeah, as, as Dan says, we're um, also supporting this event by live streaming it, and my boss is filming it, so I'm on my best behaviour this evening. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be talking to you about the Nats NatWest Six Nations Map Centre that we launched. Uh, we launched just before this tournament gone, so that was February and February and March. Uh, but just to introduce ourselves, let's solve the first mystery of what SOTIC actually stands for. So it stands for Sport on the Internet Consultants. Uh, we're one of Europe's leading digital sports agencies. We are WordPress experts. I'd like to think so anyway. Uh, and we're based in Cardiff. Is there anyone Welsh in the crowd or not? Nope, just me. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we've got headquarters out of Cardiff and, and a present, uh, some presence in London and, and other areas of the country. Um, so for the last two to three years now, we've been working in WordPress and have relaunched our clients from an older CMS onto WordPress, and, and we've, we're about 20 sites through. Um, the Six Nations Match Centre was just launching their actual live experience, and their site was on the older CMS. Uh, so we will be re rebuilding the whole thing in WordPress eventually. Um, but this was kind of like our industry standard proof of concept. And that, was, that was the idea behind it. So the project requirements that we had, we needed a robust platform because of the amount of traffic we get over such a short period of time. Uh, the Six Nations takes place over about six, six to seven weeks. Um, it's 15, uh, five rounds of three matches a time, and you're looking at tens of thousands of unique visitors a minute um, during, during game time and, and to the build-up. So we needed a robust platform. That was done, one, with building performance in mind, which I'll go into in a little bit, but it's also a combination of uh, AWS and a CDM provider who's not Cloudflare, so I'm just yeah going to skip over that bit. Uh, so <laughs> not yeah anyway. Uh, so yeah, so we wanted to deliver a fast, reliable, and robust web platform that basically allowed our clients at the Six Nations to create very, uh, very fast create pages with minimal uh, editing uh, effort essentially. Um, we all know how easy to use WordPress is, how nice the user interface is. Um, so we wanted to keep that simplicity, and uh, but yet at the same time, allow that to fuel our Six Nations Mount Center um, easily. So interactive content in sport is, is rather easy to achieve because you've got things like live stats, video, uh, images, and that kind of thing. So we wanted to provide uh, a really easy tool that clients can basically just sit provide all that content to, to users um, out of the box. So what we've kind of developed over the last two, two to three years is, is our SOTIC boiler, boilerplate WordPress theme, um, or a sports CMS, if you will. So we've actually customized WordPress to support the business logic that we encounter in sport all the time. Um, there, there's usually sort of regular bit patterns of behavior with sports. So you have pre-match build-up, you have the aftermath of a match, and you have the live match and that sort of thing. So we were able to compartmentalize these, these things into WordPress that clients can just say, outside of the, the normal requirements to have posts and pages, they can actually publish custom content as well as related to sport. So what came out of that is that we had a, a sports CMS theme that we install as a base on all of our sites, and then we customize it based on on our clients' needs and, and their look and feel and that sort of thing. Um, what really powers it all is actually our SOTIC metadata. So we have a, uh, a standard kind of like LAMP stack setup. So if you just imagine that all of our SOTIC data and the stats comes from a MySQL setup with PHP and then we consume that live into, into WordPress. Um, the metadata really is key to linking up all of the interactive content, um, and I'll go into a bit more, more detail about how that all works later on. And there's also a challenge of, of third-party software. So um, in this particular project, we used um, digital asset management, uh, YouTube, and uh, live blogging with a provider called LiveBlog Pro. So we had a challenge to integrate the actual live reporting as well of a match um, in, into WordPress onto the site. So to achieve that, we kind of did uh, five kind of building blocks. So we've got our SOTIC WordPress theme, uh, custom post types, the ACF plugin, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, uh, our metadata and widgets, and then the REST API as well out of WordPress. So first of all, our SOTIC WordPress theme, as I said, we developed this over, over the course of, I'd say, about a year and a half before it was production ready. But it, it essentially sets up a site it sets up a WordPress site and turns it into a sports site that our sports clients can log in and go, 
oh, I know what a match report is, as opposed to just writing a post that it's all there ready for them to, to compartmentalize their content. Um, it empowers our users, we, we think, um, to publish engaging content with, with minimal effort. Um, and that's really what we want to get out of it, is that when we hand over a site, our clients can just use it up straight away, essentially. Um, it's available out of the box, or we can, as I said, customize it based on requirements. So what it kind of looks like is, I'm sure you've all built a WordPress theme before, but it's got all the standard functionality in it. So it's a, it's a blog when we set it up. But then when we delve deeper into the template section, they are bespoke templates um, which, which support our, our custom post types that we know are going to exist. Um, we then build our sports functionality, uh, bits and pieces of data done in functions, but we've also got a SOTIC widgets plugin, which is where the magic happens, essentially. That's where, what pulls our stats down from our API and gives us the, the, the stats USP, essentially. Um, everything is built on the uh, Bootstrap framework, so it's mobile first and, and fully responsive. Uh, that does present us with, with some challenges sometimes if we delve into really deep stats. And obviously, you've usually got two teams against each other when you're viewing these things. So it's, you know, as you shrink, as you go up, you can show more, but obviously, you've got a mobile first approach. So that presents us with a challenge sometimes. Uh, customizations, as I said, are played per, we're made per clients, and our SOTIC widgets plugin will bring all the stats in. Uh, never has there been a more iconic duo than CPT and ACF. Uh, so they basically allow us to define, I mean, I've called it the genetic makeup of a particular post type, but advanced custom fields is actually what gives the client uh, a front-facing interface for that, uh, that they can basically control our, our functionality through a series of, of controls. Um, it's very easy to sit there and make th something functional in, in PHP WordPress. It's quite quick to prototype, but actually to keep the client in mind, I feel, is the challenge that they should be able to turn features off, customize features if they want, and, and really control, control their website. Um, what the custom templates allow us to do, um, you can see here in the Six Nations, we've actually only got one custom post type, but we would have sort of four or five on a, on a fuller WordPress site. Um, it allows us to remove complex code and functionality out of the single.php view and keep that for, for standard new. So it it's, makes that a lot easier to maintain as, as a team. Uh, our SOTIC data API and widgets, um, we have meta boxes or taxonomies that, that we've written into WordPress where our clients can enter the date of a fixture, tag it with one of the metadata values from our system and all of a sudden, they power that entire, those entire pages. So you can see on the left, we've got a bunch of stuff going on. We've got a written report, which is done in WordPress. Uh, we've got all these widgets which respond to that metadata value. Uh, digital asset management is being integrated down here off the same meta value, and the video is the same. So just by tagging that one article, the client it, is safe in their knowledge that that fixture is being shown, and the data for that fixture is, is being shown. Uh, oh wait, hang on. So how that works, um, essentially we've got specific markup that goes into that page for each widget and our WordPress plugin is basically making calls then recognize that markup and making uh, calls back to our API. Um, and our API obviously has to handle uh, these calls at high traffic as well. So just how the, uh, the WordPress, how we're sort of experimenting with the WordPress REST API at the moment, we want to be able to query by, it wouldn't make any sense to have two different types of taxonomy going on for us. So we've standardized the WordPress REST API as well um, for us to work off our metadata. So there's just a, a code segment there that we, that we use quite a lot, but um, it, it will basically just serve the articles as a JSON feed that is related to that fixture as well. Um, and because each metadata value is unique, you're only gonna get a small amount of JSON back what it also allows us to do is, I'm not sure if, if you've seen the standard REST API outputs, but it's quite a large JSON set. So what this actually allows us to do is model the things that we need back. So most of the time we just need a headline, a paragraph, an image. Why do we need any more JSON than that really? Um, so we're allowed to, we, we can model that and then we can cache it and that improves performance and all in all gets a smaller request. Um, so yeah, so that's just like your standard args and the function down the bottom, you, you can process that and turn it into JSON in whatever form you want, really. 
Um, yeah, and we've also got uh, keeping performance in mind. There's a plugin called the REST API Cache. Um, it's a bit of a, it's, it's a strange one when you look at it because it was last updated two years ago, and that's usually like, yeah, no, we'll, uh, we'll archive that. But it seems to be really solid, and what it will do is cache your REST API calls, but at the same time, it's got hooks in where, let's say you click an up, update post, it will clear the cache down so you have an updated version. Uh, and it, it, yeah, I mean, it, seem, it seems to work for us. Uh, so digital asset management, this is essentially a fancy term for galleries, but this is done off-site. So obviously at these matches, you can see there's photographers everywhere, uh, and we integrate with a, with a third-party software where they will uh, upload the images and actually tag it with the same metadata that we have in our systems. Um, obviously, there's challenges with that with onboarding photographers to do that, but they, they seem to be pretty good at it. Uh, and that, is, that will then just for us become another stats widget, but it looks like a gallery essentially. So, so we can wrap that up in whatever gallery framework that we have. We can write our own or, or we, can, we can integrate that easily. Um, the key thing is that the metadata is the same because it's, it's, it's just easy to integrate everything. Uh, and then, so if anyone's in the network tab currently refreshing, you will probably see that I lied about the uh, fixed GUID with the with the YouTube. Um, so, ne so Six Nations wanted to use YouTube, but our general out-of-the-box solution is that a video custom post type would be tagged with that same metadata, but they just wanted to integrate YouTube. So that was an extra, not an extra challenge for us, but we, we integrated with the YouTube API and then templated that on the front end. Uh, but the concept is the same. A any custom post type that, we, that you use, we used a video when on, on Lions Rugby, and you tag a video and it would come through as related content, essentially. Uh, yeah, as I said, we used our own social media API. Um, and down here, you can see that the client can control what playlist that they want to do, uh, want to use, and the same with, uh, with live blogging as well. Uh, so live blogging, this was another third-party software that we had to integrate with. We've, we've worked for, with them a long time, but this is based off uh, an ID that, that we put into WordPress. So uh, you can create as many live blogs as you want on their software, and you have a unique ID, and you drop that into WordPress, and the client is safe in the knowledge that it will just pull through a, a live blog. Um, yeah, and, and, and then on, on our side, we just enqueue their... Uh, their necessary JavaScript, and it comes through with sort of base styling, but it's very easy to, to override in our theme then uh, in the style sheets. So things that we've kind of learned along the way, and, and I would say we refined for, for this match center because when you're getting 30,000 unique views a minute, one 404 four error on an image, and suddenly you're getting those, that hit on your server every, every minute. So we, we were really sort of building with performance in mind. Um, one thing that we that we always use is conditional asset loading. So that's only loading the CSS and the JavaScript that you actually need. Um, and, and we do that kind of on the front end as well. So that takes the process of uh, that, that kind of processing off our servers as well. Um, another one was single requests. So if you look at the, it's kind of tilted, but you can kind of see on the interface, you've got a, re a report and a preview tab. Um, what we kind of wanted to keep in mind is that once you've made that request for an article, if you land on a different tab initially, that you don't make it again if you go back to that tab. So it's just little, little things like that that can really save you a lot, a lot of requests because particularly when a game is over, you may want to read the preview that Wales were expected to beat England. Well, we did. But they actually, the score was final. So uh, snap that one in, didn't I, John? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so you could read the preview that England were favorites, but we really won, but we didn't win on all that. Um, the other thing is to actually run, uh, actually test your site before, it, don't, don't test it on a live weekend, essentially. Um, I would recommend you don't. Uh, so to actually run things like GT Metrics and, and Google PageSpeed Insights will actually give you, give, you, give you kind of advice that you didn't notice. So you've got so, much, so many logos on there, that the Wales logo. Um, but if they're not all from the same URL, the CDN has to cache it twice. But if it's from one URL and you make them all uniform, it will keep that same image. Um, so just little things like that that you don't notice all the time when you're building stuff that, that can make, it, make a big difference. Um, the other thing is WordPress, obviously, with CBT and ACF, allows you to do manual overrides. So <laughs> I wish we had a swear jar at our company for it. It should just work. But, and I've said it many times myself, but don't always kind of 
maybe build into your functionality the ability to override something if it isn't quite working as expected. Um, to plug in or not to plug in, um, it's, it's always a controversial one, this, but sometimes it's, it, if the, there's always a time cost consideration to install a plugin and you install it and, and it works. Um, but in two weeks' time, you may update your WordPress uh, architecture and it may not work. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of us here are actually developers and we know how to write this, this stuff. So if you need a social media presence on your website, does it have to be a plugin? Can you not write the PHP and the JavaScript and the template yourself and, and integrate it down? Do you make your own plugin and then own your own code? Um, th these are kind of the questions we just, we just ask ourselves, um, particularly when considering um, high traffic websites. Um, another thing we picked up along the way is uh, advanced custom fields has a, has a function called get field, which will get the unique idea of a field. It makes quite a few heavy database calls. Uh, but you can get the same value using a built-in WordPress function, which is actually a lot quicker and efficient. Uh, so where we, where we can recognize, it doesn't always work if you're kind of looping through repeater fields and that kind of thing. But where it's a single value, if you use get post meta, you, you will see a performance improvement as well. Um, and the other thing is just track everything. So Google, Google Analytics can provide hash tracking. Um, we've got so many tabs on this site, it actually hurts, uh, even inside tabs as well. So the ability to see actually what content is being engaged with um, and, and, and also what isn't uh, will, will actually help us make decisions about what to support, what features to keep. Um, and that's just a kind of a general rule, not just, just for the Six Nations Math Center. Um, I think that is it. Uh, some kind of facts, well, not facts and figures. We actually use Polylang as the multilingual uh, for this site. So we delivered it in three languages. Um, I understand there's a big sponsor banner staring at me over there, uh, but that was the, that was the plugin we used based on on past experience, and and obviously we we'd be interested to explore other avenues as well. Um, but it seemed it seemed to work fine, and and yeah, we delivered it. Um, that's about it. I do um, I, I will be answering questions if you have any, um, or you can ask me later. You can probably tell I'm suffering from a cold, so maybe ask me from a distance for your own safety. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, that's it really. Thank you.